Well, good morning. This is Tampa Home Talk, and Pat George is absolutely right. There is an accident going southbound on 275, and looks like for the first five minutes, I'm going to be joining you by phone. But since uh, Leo and Adam are just five minutes away from our remote broadcast, <laughs> Red Door number five, probably a good time for you guys to jump in. Yeah, well, this is uh, this kind of brings uh, live reporting to a, a new level here on this uh, on this show. I like it. I like it when we do broadcasts remotely. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection, joined by Adam Talley from Talley Insurance. Uh, I, the acoustics in here are quite echoey. It is. It is. I like it. It's uh, it's different for sure. I just love this place. Uh, I love everything about Red Door Number Five. It's it's a cozy living room that we're sitting in next to a kitchen. <laughs> He's got the great tequilas on his wet bar over there. Those are good tequilas. Those the are one, hard. They, the ones that make the little chime on top. I like them. Yeah, those they're are hard to come by. The, the Class A Azuls, they're hard to come by. I remember back when they were only $75 a bottle. Now you can't find one for under $190. Ooh, ooh that's pricey. I have not bought a bottle in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Casamigos for you then, my hey, friend. We were talking about uh, Red Door Number 5 to change the tequila conversation a little bit. <laughs> I'm looking at Rust Steel right now, and I don't think we've talked about that in a little while. Last time we were on, we talked about Red Door Number 5 and what an amazing event and venue space it is. But I actually ended up meeting Dominic for the very first time at Rustic Steel. And so if you've not checked it out, I'm literally looking right at Rustic Steel at Highland and MLK. And so it's where he does all types of, you know, very specific, very custom art and other steel-type creations. So I know that... Dominic's done everything from iron front doors for safety that are also decorative to major art pieces that you'd recognize in Tampa. Yeah, what are those? Any what? Speaking of uh, of all the stuff that he's done, what did he create in the back of Red Door Number Five that had those huge plants that are hanging? Do you know what I'm talking about, Katrina? The staghorns. The staghorns. The stag horns. They were they were enormous. He's not he's not here right now, but they were enormous. He did some. That's impressive. Yeah, he to had get to, those things. To he hang. had to run out this morning, but you'll find Red Door Number Five at 1910 North Florida Avenue. I uh, can't miss it by the Red Door. If you miss it by the Red Door, you'll see it by the uh, military jeep out front with yes. the steel soldiers. Yes, it is also adjacent to Metropolitan Ministries. Oh, that's true. Or the uh, we're also very close to the YMCA. And you're close to Armature Works. Yes, yes. Very centrally located. Very. It's almost like this is uh, downtown Tampa, one would say. <laughs> yeah. uh, could, are we going to talk market stats? I think we can. Market stats this week, uh, the new listings are on the, on the rise. That's I'm, good. We've, we've come up from our dip at 699. We're currently at 811 new listings on the week. Um, we have a lot of price decreases. I've been following price decreases lately because price decreases are on the rise. Um, it was funny. Back in April, you only had about 200 price decreases, and now you're looking at 436. So uh, I think either that's one of two things. Either people are realizing they can't gouge as high as they used to, yeah. or the market is stabilizing a little bit where people aren't overspending to the point they've been in the past. What well, do you think a, it is? I think, it's a, I think it's a mix of both. Um, I think I've, you I know. I think I'm going to comment on this one as a professional guy. <laughs> Uh, on my listings, we're not quite seeing the price reductions unless it's on the upper end of the price range, like over a half a million dollars. And that's because our listings are priced correctly. You've got a lot of brand new agents out there right now that are dabbling in real estate that pull these pie in the sky numbers that educated buyers are not willing to pay. And I think that is where you're seeing the price reductions in the market. I don't think it's from, you know, the experienced agents like me, which are which are now really the minority when you look at the entire number of agent pool. Yeah, Katrina, I want to agree with you, but but the numbers, if you look at the numbers over aggregate since the beginning of the year, um, price decreases have been on the rise. Um, like I said, right around spring break, they, they sort of bottomed out at 200. And, and now they're on the rise, and now every week it's a little bit more than the week before. I, I think that's more than just inexperienced agents. I mean, if it was inexperienced agents, well, it'd still be me, around the same let level. Me give you an example. Let me give you an example why I don't believe that's so. And I test this on more than one of my listings. I had one that we priced last week at 275 and we were at the upper end of that price range. We did have data and comps and sales to support it. It was the highest sale 
in that neighborhood was 275 and I can tell you, we got a cash offer for $20,000 above it. So the hedge funds and the, the people that buy them to rent them out are still very strong in force right now. And that's still, you know, going to continue to drive the market. So, again, I really feel like, you know, when I'm pricing stuff at the upper end of the range, it shows well, but I still have a comp to support it. And we're getting above that list price. That tells me that other people are choosing numbers that they don't have data to support. So that's why they're ha seeing price reductions. Are you still seeing a lot out there where um, it's probably more when you're looking for shopping for your, your buyers, but have you seen, are you still seeing a lot where people um, will underprice it and try to get a bidding war going? I think the market is still doing that right now for 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 home sellers, you know, and this is a conversation I have with my seller because it's it's not uncommon for me to price a listing and actually take the listing a month or more of going live on the market. And in this market and really in any market, we're re-looking at the comps right before we go on the market to see if we need to adjust the price any. And when I say adjust the price, that could be either way. Now in this market, it's been up. And I can tell you on this particular listing, I took it at 275. When I looked at the data, it still supported 275. And what I told the seller was we need to leave it at 275 and let the market do the heavy lifting of bringing the price up. Now, I feel like if we were even at 280, that would have significantly impacted the number of offers that we got because we had about 17 offers, I think, before we closed it. Okay. Are you still seeing, um, well, I know, I know building materials are going down. So are the, uh, are the new homes, like the new build homes, are those kind of leveling out too, or are those still going off like, like crazy yeah. as well? New construction still can't keep up. There's still a wait for a lot of things. Uh, the demand is still significantly higher than the, um, you know, than the, than people that want to build. I'll give you a prime example. Builders are getting so particular that literally, I, and I'm not going to name this builder. I know I have sold a lot of their homes, but I went to do a walkthrough yesterday with a client, and one of the first questions I asked was, has your cleaning crew been here yet? Because it didn't look like they were. I mean, mm -hmm. there were significant, like, not only handprints, smudges, all types of things that were on a, a window that was probably 16 feet in the air that the typical first-time home buyer is not going to be able to reach. But aside from that, there was paint on all the knobs. There was many things from the initial walkthrough that had not even been completed. And so we're talking about at least a week. And so, you know, when I went there, the new home, not he's not the sales agent. He's like the, um, like the foreman or whatever that basically does the walkthrough with the buyer as well. Mm -hmm. and gets that, those punch list items finished. He actually asked me to leave yesterday, if you can believe that because it was pointing out some of the defects. And I said, um, I'm not going to leave. My buyer has asked me to be here, and I, I won't be leaving. And I said it in a very polite way, and ultimately we were able to work it out, and I stayed there, but I was shocked. I've never, ever been asked in 30 years to leave when I was trying to represent the buyer's best interest, ever. Wow. And, you know, it gets a little uncomfortable for the buyer, right? They can just sit there and wait and can be uncomfortable. Yeah, a lot of tension there. Are you still seeing a lot of people waiving uh, inspections and appraisal contingencies not and all so that much, stuff? Not so much inspections, but they're having to move it up. I am still seeing not complete waiver of appraisals, but up to a certain dollar amount. Mm -hmm. We are seeing that. If the demand is high enough in a certain neighborhood, that's where you might see a complete appraisal waiver. But I would say for your everyday home probably not one more thing that's probably worth mentioning while we're talking about the new build stuff i actually it, it was chatter in one of the real estate groups that i'm in for my office and do you know one of the builders this is not one of my clients this just happened to someone else i know one of the builders tried to cancel a contract with a buyer for checking out the property while they're building it so you have to remember it's technically still the builder's home 
And if you go without permission, you're trespassing. And so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I think builders are looking for any reason they can to cancel a contract and get more money. So don't give them a reason. Wow, that's a, that's a really good tip. I didn't even know they could do that. Uh, I didn't know they could cancel the contract. I know if they tried to cancel the contract over looking at the home, I'd, I'd, I'd be on the phone to an attorney. Oh, yeah. I think that's kind of what happened. They tried to, and ultimately they ended up getting that figured out real quick. Yeah. <laughs> but I will tell you, don't. Builder's office unrepresented. Those contracts are very one-sided and very builder-friendly. Call or text us at 813-377-2775. Again, 813-377-2775, and we'll protect your interest when you're buying a new build. 813-377-2775. We'll be back in a moment. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Leo Kane here with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. We're reporting live from Red Door Number 5. Adam Talley on the mic. Yeah, welcome home, by the way. Well, I was just trying to make sure the room was a hush, hush, simma, simma <laughs> down. But, I mean, I, I think that table, maybe not the table, but those chairs around the conference room table are new here. What do you think, Adam? Uh, no, those were here last time. Oh, they were? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm just You're always not as observant as you used to be. I'm just amazed. The, the different artwork, I got an African feel. I still see pieces of the Berlin Wall here. I, I'm sure we'll get uh, Dominic on to talk, talk about the Berlin Wall in a couple of minutes. Is that going to happen, Katrina? He's, I think he's coming closer to the 9 o'clock hour, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Let me see that outline. I'll let you know. I think we're doing insurance. You guys beat me it here was, this it morning. Was, yeah. It's insurance your, day. I thought your father was coming here today. No, he couldn't make it today. Oh, what a treat. He I missed know. it. I know. He's, I still, that photo still pops up every now and though uh, with, uh, from when he went the first time. Did I meet your dad or have I been gone every time he's been in the studio? Uh, he's, only come, he's only come once and you were gone that day. It was just, he's only been in the studio once? I thought it was twice. No, no, it was just once, and it was him and I, and we were in St. Pete, and uh, we, were, we, were only, we were only doing one hour at that time, and uh, it was him, me, and Pat. No, he came to the open house, the live broadcast. Oh, that's right. He, he came did. to Maiden C. Was he it? Did. No, was yes. it Maiden C? No. Yes. Yeah, Maiden yes. C. Yes, yes. Well, that was, that was a home game for him. He lives in Palo Beach, so. Well, okay, that was easy. <laughs> it's yeah. like you guys just rolling out of bed <laughs> yeah, down the yeah, street. Yeah, we do it downtown every week, we'll be fine. We will never be late. Sorry to tell you guys, we're not <laughs> moving the Tampa Home Talk Studios from Loots. <laughs> It's not Lutz home talk, though. Um, so what do you think? You want our, who's in hour number two? I don't know. Stephanie. Okay. Stephanie. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you talk about insurance? This the, is National yeah. Insurance Week. This is week. National Insurance Week. It was National Ice Cream Day on Sunday, but now it's National Insurance Week. You know, they should move National Insurance Week to the last week of May to get everybody aware for hurricane season. Well, I think, they, but nationally, we don't have hurricanes all year. Yeah, Fair you're right enough. about that. There's Fair something enough. else and different and different. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about real estate related? Because I think I made some valid points we don't talk about I often want to talk before about we insurance. jump into insurance. This is okay. an Adam's chance. Okay, to insurance shine. it is. We can talk about we can we can do I just wondered if you had any other questions from uh, where we left off in the first one. I I do not, but something that you know, and I really a question for you, and yeah, I know you don't really see it, but I'm sure some other agents out there do, is with all these carriers getting so tight on all their restrictions and so, um, you know, on the roofs and everything yeah, like that. We, we were talking about that with how many, that. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some houses where it's like, I, I can't insure it. And I don't Actually, know if they're closing I don't, I don't or not. Know. Let me talk about this. Cause I don't think, do we have Aaron Donovan on the air or was this a private conversation with her? I'll, I'll, Respark the memory, and you guys t remind me if it was. I, I'm like, can't remember if it was on the air or in person. Oh, you got the coffee. But you got some, the coffee's not working. Yeah, yet. there's some <laughs> legislation that's like on the table that's really talking about how people are wanting. They're wanting them to change their roof every ten years, and one of those got passed. The other one, they're still so they're still working on. So I worry about that. I mean, you're talking about ones you can't insure. What's a good example of something you can insure? Well, I mean, we'll see it all the time where somebody will give us a four point. Right. And, you know, maybe there'll be some electrical issues or some plumbing issues or something. I mean, it's houses get old. Things break. You know, things mm -hmm. aren't what they things are 
code now that weren't you know well in the old days of like of like grandma and grandpa having their house right Right. and the same insurance carrier for 40 years exactly and they never check anything or they just renew them every year those days really don't exist they don't they don't but what we're seeing is with the market the way it is right now um from the real estate side is we're seeing some some sellers that are like no i don't want to fix that if you can't get insurance, they'll find yeah. somebody else. I mean, we, you and I and, had that yeah. literally on a client that was paying cash. Yeah. And that was part of the reason why they took her offer. There was multiple offers. She was originally going to get financing, but she had the ability to pay cash. And I said, look, why don't you just pay cash and then get your money back out of it yeah. after you close? And the challenge is there were some four-point items on there, which the seller said was not on their four-point. Yeah, and, and that's why you need a, That's why, you know, if somebody hands you an inspection from a – previous you know sale get your own inspection right have yeah. some call leo get a professional out there because could you change. even use that because it was too old right it wasn't if it's, that old but. If, if it's within a year we can it wasn't within can, a year it but it wasn't old year. but it was older than a but year if it, it, but it still had issues on it they just didn't know what they were looking at oh you know, there okay was, i didn't look at there it. was still some i think they had a double tap on there or something and we see double taps a lot i'm yeah. assuming that is probably some they fixed something at some time, and the electrician got lazy and put them in the same. So, or their uncle talk about the double do taps, Leo. Why do we see that so much? Is that a lazy thing? Is that like a handyman job? Does that mean they're out of circuits? Like, why? Typically, why do we see so many double taps? Typically, I would see that because they're out of circuits. So it could mean the difference between installing a brand new panel, or just putting a new wire in. So a lot of times we'll see that they'll add a pool, uh, then they'll add a lighting circuit for the pool. Then they'll add a plug underneath the breaker box. I mean, you're going to run out of slots. Yeah. So what happens when you run out of slots? You have to upgrade your whole panel, or can you do a sub-panel? Or? Pretty much you either need to do a sub-panel, or you need to upgrade the whole panel. Depends on your overall amperage. I mean, sometimes you can't use a sub-panel because you don't have enough amps mm. in your panel, so you need a new panel. Sub-panel only works if you have total amps. So a good example is like an apartment an apartment unit's a 60 amp breaker. Right. If you tried to put a hot tub on your balcony, your panel's not strong enough. Right. But if you're going to add a new garbage disposal, right, you just kind of put a new breaker in and you're good to go. So what does that mean actually, like logistically, when you're looking at the panel and someone's double tapped? What does that mean, and what hazards are actually present? Because it's a simple fix. Well, if you have room, it's a simple fix. <laughs> right. Normally, it's a no, simple fix. Yeah, yeah normally. I mean, the big hazard there is you have two circuits on one breaker, which means that the breaker could be overloaded easier if both of those circuits are in use. Which means more risk of fire, right? More risk of fire, more risk of the breaker tripping. It, you're just, I mean, it's not more risk of fire. Your breaker will trip, theoretically. If the breaker is not working properly because but it's But if the overworked. breaker trips, that's an indicator that the system's overloaded and it's right. trying to shut some yeah. stuff down. So, I mean, on, on, the, on the close side, you're looking at the, the breaker tripping more often. On the downside, you're looking if you have a lightning strike. Now you've got two circuits that are joined. If they're on opposite ends of the house, you can cause an arc through the whole house, which could cause a fire. So it is a fire hazard. It is a pretty big one with insurance companies. They don't like to see double taps. It is the sign of an improperly wired system. Yeah. They don't like I, I can't system. imagine electricians would do that. I think that's probably like a No, I see electricians handy. do you that. You do all the see time. electricians do it? Wow. Because people get cheap. They don't want to pay for a whole breaker panel. And in the electrician's mind, if the breaker is working properly, then there is no risk of fire. Because if the if I turn my garbage disposal on and I turn my laundry machine on at the same time and it's too much juice, the breaker should pop. Yeah. So they're trusting that the breaker – they're trusting they're, the breaker They're trusting pop. the electrician. But if it system. doesn't, that's when the fire hazards are present. Well, yeah. But, I mean, in an electrician's mind, a double tap isn't the worst thing you can do because – the system's still in place to protect What's you. What's code on that, though? Oh, you're not supposed to have it. Okay, that's what I thought. So, what's what? How much extra does it usually cost to upgrade a panel? Let's say someone is out of room. It could be like eighteen hundred to twenty-two hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. So it's the same as like if they have a faulty Zensco panel or whatever. Yeah, I mean right? it's Similar replacing price. a panel. I yeah. mean, if you're adding a sub panel, you probably can do that for eight hundred or less if you have the the ability to do that. But you also need the space. I mean, it's great when you have panels that are in the garage and you've got space next to the panel. Mm-hmm. But if you've got an older house and the panel's in near a crawl space 
or if you're in an apartment and it's built into the wall, you might not have room for a sub panel. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking about this because my own home, I, I think I'm at a panel space. We had a hot tub in our back when I, <laughs> even though we have a spa, yeah. we ended up taking it out, getting rid of it when we did our pool remodel. And then when I got my Tesla, I had the wall charger installed. So he used the old breaker from the spa that we were no longer using. That makes sense because that was a spa would have been a 220 circuit. Yeah. And a 220 circuit actually takes two. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting. Yeah. So houses, houses are 120 to 240 on electricity. Do so the wall you, panels take two as well? They probably do. Because well, I've heard the, people to say charge a charge a Tesla, you would pro- you would need you would need a dual. So instead yeah, of needing so. one breaker in your panel box, you actually need two. So items like your air handler, your stove range, big stuff that takes more juice. Yeah, the stuff that has the huge plug, um, the 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 big circle plug mm-hmm. with the three prongs, mm-hmm. as opposed the to dryer. the dryer. Yeah, dryer. Yeah. As opposed to the little guy, um, those are going to take two breakers in your panel box. So yeah, if you're going to replace the spa with a charging you don't, station you don't want to use the charger that comes with the tesla it takes two days to charge it. oh and you do the normal plug wow. <laughs> literally two days not kidding that's rough yeah how that's long rough. does it take to get into space i don't know about that i'm not sure <laughs> katrina's afraid of heights so she'll stay away oh, from that see, one i would go to space i would totally go to space you know i was thinking about you we were talking about you last night leo because we've been doing trivia on, on thursday, thursday nights. nights yeah and At that was Plantation one of the questions Palms. last week was about when's the last time some a man went to the moon and I was like, holy crap. I think we should ask Pat George that and see if maybe he gets it right. When's the last time someone was on the moon, Pat? 1963, 7.30 in the morning on a Tuesday. <laughs> Did you Google that? It has that? to be like late 70s, I thought. No, I think it is in the 60s. When, when is it, Leo? I made it all uh, I want to say it's in the 80s. I mean, are we talking Americans or Chinese or Russians? No, I think it was Americans, but I, I do think, God, no, I can't remember. Yeah, because yeah. I thought it was it was the 80s because I was like, it I was remember when people, I remember when I was a kid and they did the teacher space program. Well, yeah. that was the Challenger. The, yeah. the Challenger blew up in 84. That kind of. They set, didn't do it anymore. They set, they set back our space program by 10 years. Yep. I wow. remember that. So, yeah, I want to say it was like 82 was the last time we were on the moon. Nice. Well, we'll talk insurance when we get back. back. I do have the answer for your roof question, December by the way. December 11th, 1972. That was in the 70s. Okay. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah. 72? Yeah. For the Americans or for anyone? Uh, doesn't say. Well, Elon we'll find Musk out when we coming. come back. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home. This is Tampa Home Talk. Uh, I'm Adam Talley with Talley Insurance, joined by Katrina Madewell, realtor extraordinaire, That's Tampa me. home expert. Tampa Home Talk, my yeah. hometown. And Leo Kane, Barrel Project Engineering and Inspections. That's you. So we're waiting for the, the build-up. The build-up. I mean, the, build up. The, the smartest inspector in town. If we got anything related to four-pointer otherwise, <laughs> right. he is our go-to. He is the man. Well, I've, we, I've asked him some pretty wild questions over the years. You have. What's he, the wildest one I've asked you? I think I know what it is. You tell me what you think. Sinkhole related? Uh, it doesn't have to be. Just first thing. No, no, that, that's, that was the first thing. That I was came, it? Yeah, okay. sinkhole related. I think one of the wildest things I've asked you is how complicated is it to get utilities to an island? Do you remember when I asked you that? Oh, yeah. And then depending on the island, I mean, we, we helped uh, establish some utilities on an island in other nations before. So, yeah, it's all about uh, the ability to lay pipe under the sea. Um, if you that does go. not sound like an easy project. It's not. It, no. It, nor does it sound like a DIY project. No. It doesn't sound cheap. Let's, no. let's, let's, let's start there. It does the not sound like it's an inexpensive task. The important thing task. is, as they learned on Fire Island, is water is more important than electricity. You can solar yourself right. electricity. You cannot solar yourself water. Yes, that is true. That is true. Um, so we were talking about insurance, and you asked about the roofs with Aaron Donovan. What yes. they were going to do is a, it's a... An ACV schedule for the roof, right? What does that actual mean? Cash so actual cash value. Actual cash value. Actual cash value. Instead of them replacing your entire roof, they'll give you the depreciated value for your roof based on the age of the roof oh. after 10 years. Well, that kind of makes a little That's sense. That's kind of fair, though. I mean, really. if your roof is... Because all these people getting new roofs. When if your roof is 18 years old and it has a useful life of 25, you... Had 18 of 25 years yeah, of life. You did pretty good. I, I think but none of them really are lasting 25. Not, not here. here. Not the shingle roof. Well, I yes, with architectural. It just depends on the type of shingle. And this is why I'm opposed to it, because they're going to take the cheapest three-tab shingle out there, 
that lasts 15 years, and they're going to say that's your useful life, even though you're going to have shingles that are 30-year shingles and 50-year shingles. Well, how can they do that? That's not accurate. Well, so, I mean, it's we'll see how it all sorts out on that one. I do know a lot I, of carriers. I think here, here's the challenge. When they make laws and rules like that, they don't have enough experts to kind of right. bring more information to the table so that it makes sense from all sides. Well, you got to think that's like most laws. You have lawmakers doing it, not the people in that yeah, actual I really, field. The, thing, the only thing it. that scares me, like on, on the surface, I would be in, in favor of an actual cash value depreciated payout. However, it's establishing what that quote unquote denominator is for the useful life. That's where I think the insurance companies are going to take advantage of homeowners. And yeah. here, here's the challenge, too. Like when I think about a roof, right, like I've already replaced the roof on my house once. Right. The next time I have to do that, if I'm in the same home and I, I'm be assuming the last I will time, be. Maybe. Yeah, right. Well, I'm thinking like I probably would go metal because like who wants to replace it again in another I would go 10 metal. or 15 years? I have a metal roof. That That is the best type of and roof out and there. And they're basically saying, you know, oh, replace after a certain amount, which kind of leads to – what we've talked about before, I, I think it's going to lead to some other like self-insurance type options. Yeah. Well, I think what, well, what you're seeing now is some of these carriers, even though it's, that's not the law or that's not in place yet or anything like that, they're giving you the option. So for, to do what? for a reduced rate, you can do ACV on your roof with a few carriers right now. Yeah. They actually started that before, like the bill was supposed to go into effect July 1st and a piece of it did. And they were doing this back in March. But yeah. how much is that discount? Is it worth it? A couple hundred bucks. It's not worth it, but it's people are very so. short-sighted. They are. I mean, you got to th- you get people out there, and they're they're really con- they're concerned over a couple hundred bucks, and it's it's kind of crazy. You'll see they they get really pa- everybody's real passionate about money in their home. It's their biggest investment, right? And obviously, rates have gone up. I, I whoever's listening right now, I don't even have to look at your policy. Oh, yeah. I know it's gone up. My from last rates year to went this up, year. and I asked you about it, and then I got sidetracked, and then yeah. it popped in my mind. And I tell you, it was the day that it was expiring. I was like, yeah. let me figure out how to go online yeah. and but, renew but this before did, midnight. Adam, my rate. You recently renewed two of my policies. My rates went down. How did you do that? Well, you were talking different type of policy, so just you're talking. Just trying to. I uh, know. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So that's that commercial was on the commercial versus side. residential. Yeah, it's on the yeah. commercial side. But um, you know, they get real passionate about their homeowners insurance. Yet they'll probably be paying double on. They've been paying double than that on their auto insurance for the past however many years, and it doesn't it doesn't click, right? You know, a couple yeah. hundred dollars, especially if you have a mortgage. You're talking 30 bucks a month. You know, it's not, it, you're, you're, that's dinner, right? But See, let me ask you an auto insurance get, question, okay. Adam. Ask away. So, Good, because I got a homeowner's question. <laughs> so yeah. I, I've got a car. Mm-hmm. Let's just say. Proud of you. It, 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 it gets <laughs> lower and lower in value every year. Correct. So as a, as a savvy insurance agent, do you readjust the value of the vehicle into lower rates each year, or how does that work? So the value of the vehicle is actually, it's just, that's always been actual cash value. Unless yeah. we're talking about a, um, you know, like a supercar or something like that, we can do, you know, agreed value. Yeah, so, so if I'm a safe driver mm-hmm. and my car is, loses 15% a year in value, mm-hmm. so do, should my auto insurance go down each year? Your, uh, the cost that they're charging you for comp and collision, if their rating platform has stayed the same from term to term, that should go down. Now that you say that, I don't think it did. We've talked about this. I've got a big carrier I've had for my homeowners or for my car insurance for years. Mm -hmm. And it's just, we just can't touch it. Like literally they've insured my teenagers at, I don't know how they do kind of rates, but just thinking about that, I remember like when my Prius was getting older mm. and older and older, I was like, I don't think I need full coverage on this anymore. It's a really yeah. old car. It's got a lot of miles. And if you own it outright, that's an option for you. But you'll see. But what you'll see, though, on that comp and collision is even though that number may be going down and some carriers don't break out how they're like break down how the how the premium is split. But you'll see that number go down. But your liability the cost for liability will go up, right? Why? Well, it depends on where you're at. Like in our area, in Tampa, like we're a very high accident prone area, right? You could live in St. Pete. Because I, I remember when I moved from St. Pete to Tampa, I paid like $500 more when I moved to Tampa than St. Pete. And it's just, you know, zip codes and Inner everything city. else like that. I, yeah. I, 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 I kind of agree with that because if I'm in a, 
a older looking car, a dirtier car. Mm. I take more risks on the road because I'm like, people are going to get out of my way. They're going <laughs> to see this thing. They're going to know I don't care. Yeah. And they're going to get out of my way. But if I'm in a nice brand new car, people are going to cut me off. People are going to stop short. They're going to like, this guy's got a car he cares about. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing you got to think about too is your ve- like how the vehicle itself is rated. Right. So before I had my pickup truck, I had an old uh, Honda Civic, right? It was a 2011, very, very basic. Bought my pickup truck. I'm thinking, okay, my insurance rates are going to go way higher because this truck is worth probably like five times what that, you know, what the Honda Civic was worth. My rate actually went down. And it's because the truck is well. New. Trucks are cheaper to insure, aren't right? Yeah, because it's, it's they're it less accident newer. prone. I mean, less anytime we've prone. added the teenagers to the policy, they always get insured on the truck. It's yeah. way cheaper. Yeah, anytime you have a vehicle that a lot of teenagers drive, and actually the 2011 Honda Civic, that's one of the more popular vehicles of that time. Yeah. So they're going to have a high, maybe not per capita on how many Civics they sold, but Civics are going to be in quite a few accidents. Just based on the numbers. fact that yeah. there's so many more of them out there. And, and what's interesting about the Honda Civic and, and like the Toyota Camry of the early t- 2010s, those are a high risk for being stolen because they need parts. Yes. Well, and the other side of that too is, is let's face it, if I'm in an accident in, in that Honda Civic, I, you know, I'm probably going to get hurt. If I'm in an accident in my pickup truck, I'm probably walking away from that. You know? Yeah. Like, Minimal damage. Min- like uh, the, yeah. the car that is in front of me is going to be a wreck, but, you know, I'll probably be fine. So that's kind of how they look at that. I think you the Honda Civic. Well, I, 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 I tell you what's like interesting. It was a great car. Talking about used cars, mm-hmm. when, I, when I went to buy my car, I actually used, I looked for a used Tesla. Mm-hmm. I really did. Because I, I like to buy my cars that are like a lease turn in, yeah. two years old. That's how we bought my wife's car. We got. I love. A steal I love buying car. cars like that, and it. I tell you, it doesn't exist in Tesla. Well, and you can't do it for for like pickup trucks and stuff either, like the because their value I, stays you know real for trucks, high. but trucks go down. They Not do. Really, they become work trucks though. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it's it, common to see a truck with like two, three hundred thousand miles. It's rare to see a car with over a hundred. Yeah. Well, I know our F one fifty. Like, if we had bought that brand new from the dealer, it probably would be eighty thousand dollars. Oh, they're but trucks we are bought expensive it. These we days. bought it two crazy. years old. It was like we bought it for picked it up for thirty some thousand. Yeah, but still thirty something thousand. For most people, that's a lot of money for most right, people. But it's not 80. I understand. I can get that, a brand new Dodge Journey for that. That's what it, I drive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not 80. And like, I, why, I, why would I pay for a truck? It doesn't even have back seats, it doesn't have the. Sure, like, it does. Mine does. I've You got a new crew cab. It's yeah. like squished. If you spend $80,000, you can get plenty of room. It's not squished. Yeah, it's not a truck. That's true. It is not. Me. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, auto insurance, it's uh, we're seeing that go up too, but so, it's, it's not as. Going back as, to homeowners insurance, homeowners. Yes, since homeowners. we are Tampa home talk and yeah, not, yeah. you know. Well, you have auto hey, talk. hey, most people have to park a car inside their house. So. They hey, do. Adam can bundle homeowners and auto. I can. Yes. So, I can. And it's insurance week, so I didn't think my sidebar topic was no, that far. Was it it no, wasn't, that but was I want to go back to what you said because we saw this literally with a customer mm-hmm. and the market still is so tight right. that literally we're seeing the seller say, mm, nah, I don't want to fix anything. It truly yeah. is as is, and we've got stuff on the four point Mm -hmm. that it's hard for you to get around insurance and in this particular case you couldn't do any insurance on it i couldn't yeah uh we were able to help her by the end of the week and before the storm came which was the goal so so let's talk about the way that happened so our client actually ended up paying cash so closed on a Monday. The, the storm was coming the very, the very next day. Monday week. was it Monday or Wednesday? I thought it was a Wednesday. Closed on a Wednesday. I think it was a Wednesday. Yeah. And literally, we got the clear four point immediately and did all the work like the day she closed. Mm-hmm. To, and then we were like, "Where is the, where's the four, four point?" It was the electrician holding stuff up? Yeah. We're like, uh, "There's a storm coming. We need this now." <laughs> yeah. We got we got lucky. We got lucky with that storm too. It really yeah. passed. It was really much to do about nothing, but. Something like that, you know, if it makes that little right hand turn into me, the bay, we're SOL. Yeah. You so, know? what options do you have if someone's getting a loan and they're in that position? You really don't have any insurance options at all, <sighs> we, or could you insure them on a builder's risk or something silly until they get it changed? It, so, it would depend on where it's located because we do have some decent product. Like it's called an HO8. It's it's a more widely. They don't have any upfront. Uh, a lot more exclusions. Know. Yeah, a lot of exclusions. But, but that's still better than no insurance than no, for a you week. You can close, yeah. basically. 
Um, well, that's what I'm thinking. Like, so if they're finance, they've got to have some insurance. It's not an option. Right. To close without insurance. Right. So we have that. We have some options, but it's limited, right? If you live in the wrong zip code and they're not riding there, I don't have anything, right? And a builder's risk is really for people that aren't living in the house that are doing major renovations. Well, she not wasn't like, living in the house, and she had to make those repairs before she could move in. So. Right. But it's more like 50% of the entire value type oh. of renovation, not... A couple grand versus 300000 So no exception on that at all? Correct. Okay. No, if you're confused about insurance, 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. We are reporting from Red Door Number 5 in Come down and see us. I like how you say reporting. We have an open Red Door Number 5, so come see us. We're right on Florida Avenue. We are news media. I want want press passes for the Super Bowl We're news media and... Uh, we are Talk Radio. All right, this is Tampa Home Talk. We'll be back right after the break. Welcome home. Final segment, our number one Tampa Home Talk. Leo Kane here talking with Adam Talley all about insurance for National Insurance Week. Yeah. How did that come Sorry. about anyway? Do we know? Who knows? <laughs> there's some. There's something Somebody for every. There's stuff. something for everything. They make up too many things these, these days. But um, but anyways, before we left, you were talking about what do you do if it doesn't pass a four point? Yeah. Right. So you have to get insurance because you have a loan and you can't close without insurance. The most important thing, if you know you're going to be in a situation like that, or you think you're going to be in a situation like that, don't wait till the last minute. Definitely. Right. Because it, there's there's a rate for every risk, but. If we need to go to a broker or something like that, now we're on somebody else's time schedule, not ours. I thought you were an insurance broker. I'm an insurance a, a true broker in our field. Like most people think we're a broker because we have 60 carriers, right? But a true broker is somebody in our industry, somebody that accesses like carriers that nobody has access Off market. to, right? Like they have a different license than I have. So they that's how they access like the excess and surplus line. How long does that take to get that? Yeah, why doesn't Tally Insurance have that? Because it's just a different... We use brokers to access that type of stuff. It's just a completely different... hard to insure stuff. Yeah, it's just a completely different thing. So like Hall, we use Hall and company for some of your policies. Yeah. They're a broker. That's how we access Lloyd's of London and that kind of stuff. It's just a different realm. So I'm not actually insured through Hall. I'm just kind of... It, they're they're like an MGA, yeah. Okay, so I'm insured through Tally, who's insured through Hull, who's insured through. I need to f- see what's you're on my in seal, through, right? You're insured through you're insured through like Northfield, I Northfield. think, right? So that then, sounds like it would be really fun if you had a claim. I'm just saying. No, no, because you'd go straight to the carrier, right? It's but it, who is the carrier? Northfield. Okay. Northfield. You just have to on. The most important thing to you is that we can access them, so you we can shop all the carriers I, not what just I heard as a key statement for me is the most important thing is he can access it so if i have any issues i just call him uh-huh. yeah absolutely so we do you know we were talking about it earlier we do a lot of commercial insurance as well so not just homes and cars but businesses and uh, fleets like leo's for us too yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. and this is why i like having a local agent i like having one person i can pick up the phone and call Especially when I need something called a certificate of insurance to get paid from some of our vendors. I don't want to go through a national switchboard. I don't want to have to. Yeah, that's annoying. I don't have to talk to someone for an hour for them to send me a document, hopefully in two days. I can just send Adam a quick email. He sends out a quick um, certificate of insurance. I get a paid from the client. It's, it's very easy that way. Usually, as usually if, I, if you catch me at the right time, usually within like an hour or two, so, which is... <laughs> so what are a couple of things not covered by homeowner's insurance that people should be aware of? Well, something that everybody should be aware of nowadays and they need to look at their policy is going to be water damage. I was going to say flood. It came We're, to mind first. I didn't think any of them so cover water so damage. So water da- So people get mistaken between flood and water damage, right? Flood... Typically a separate policy that's rising water, like rain, storm surge, et cetera. So people are doing, ex- insurance carriers are doing exclusions on water damage? Oh, yeah, definitely. Water damage is like pipes breaking, and we're seeing a How lot of carriers. How do you not cover that on homeowner's insurance? Well, they're going to want to exclude copper pipes, which are from the 80s. They're yeah. all starting to fail. Galvanized pipes, yeah. um, those are a no-no. Uh, polybutylene pipes, they're, those, yeah, are, those, those are Basically, are once pipes. a home hits a certain age, they're going to exclude it, and maybe they'll give you the option to do limited. We have some carriers now that are doing limited regardless of age. It could be a brand new house they're limiting it to $10,000. Mm-hmm. Polybutylene pipes is what, 80s? Yeah, it was that. it's like flexible gray pipe from mm-hmm. the 80s. And I just had a house in uh, Orlando I inspected two weeks ago where the polybutylene pipe, they had a pipe break. 
and then they had another pipe break. And pretty much now they've had a pipe break in every room that has had plumbing in it. Well, I'll tell you a story. Yeah, story time. <laughs> I had have this, for a story? this townhome. It's real quick. And I was selling it. And mm-hmm. the insurance was going to expire about two weeks. It did expire two weeks before basically it closed. And I said, oh, I don't need to renew. Mm-hmm. I'll just go ahead and uh, self-insure for a couple weeks. <laughs> Long <laughs> no, story time, short. Huh? Oh, boy. Uh, I got a call from an appraiser saying, uh, there's a bunch of water in here. What should I do? I said, what are you talking about? Uh-oh. He said, there's a bunch of water in the property. What should I do? I said, turn open the, the door off? and let it out. Turn the water off. I don't know. He go, and he said, I opened the door and it was like a river. There was polybutylene pipes oh, and one no. of them had broken no, and no. it literally flooded the whole bottom part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, Water damage and roofs. Those are the two number one claims that we see, right? And there's not really – the the thing that ruined water damage for everybody was assignment of benefits. Yes. Because that really – what happened is your normal, say, couple grand for a, a you know, a water damage issue turned into 15 and 20 grand. And that really blew the rates up, and that's kind of where we got where we are right now. So, so what an assignment of benefits is, is I'm a contractor. Mm-hmm. I will – take over for you the homeowner because you don't know how to navigate these waters and i will handle your claim and assign how much money i think there is to do all these fixes right on the surface i like it because homeowners i I, i'm very experienced in this industry Mm -hmm. of insurance claims and i don't see how homeowners can navigate these waters by themselves with the auto denials with What's a public adjuster versus an insurance adjuster? It's like the medical field. Instance. It's Chinese. Right. It's too much. For yeah. So I side. like the assignment of benefits for the reason of have it, have someone that's in the industry represent you. I don't like it when I'm in a place like the villages and I ask someone why they filed a roof claim and they're like, "Well, my neighbor got a hundred dollars for referring me because there was a storm event two years ago." Right. I'm like, that's, oh, that can't, it gets abused and then we end up where we're that's at. That's right where insurance here. rates go up. And then with AOB. Said What's contra- AOB? Assignment of Benefits. benefits. Uh, said contractor can sue the insurance carrier in your name. And they can accept payment or not accept payment in your name. They can determine how long they want to fight in your name. How does that work? How uh, does that affect the homeowner? It's called an assignment of benefits. The right. homeowner is just along it, for the you ride. Gave it, you gave it to them. You let them do it. And now it's their, now it's their show. No, no, this is our show. Tampa well, there should be talk. a disclosure on that. There is. They're, they're signing it. But nobody's how many that. things? How many? Th- well, you're, you're, you do contracts every day. I so read You read everything. Adam but sent me like 30 <laughs> documents last week for my insurance renewals. I didn't read a single one. That is dangerous. Don't do that. I was, I was at a closing yesterday, and the, the closer hands the- I didn't have time to read all that. Fair enough. They, they hand the people the paperwork, and they're like, here, here's the mortgage. It says if you pay, you stay. If you don't, you won't. And the guy looks at it like he's going to read it. And he goes, knock yourself out. No one ever reads it. And I said, I have actually read every provision in there. Wow. Yeah. No. So it's, it, there's a lot going on in the industry. And it's, it, that's leading to these increases in rates. One thing I did want to mention, though, before we, we you know, go into Exit the next Exit insurance. Hour. Yeah. Because I get, that's my number one call these days is why is my insurance rate high? What can I do? We were talking about it's not easy to switch now, right? Let's say your roof's 12 years old. That's not going to work. Do a policy review. A lot of your policies, especially if you've been with the same carrier for a while, your dwelling coverage has probably outpaced what it actually costs to rebuild your house. So I had a 1,200 square foot bungalow. They're insured for like $350,000. Unless it's gold fixtures, it's not $350,000 to rebuild. We redid the or replacement. House. <laughs> we redid the replacement cost estimate. Knocked off $100,000 off of that, and they ended up saving about 800 bucks. So nice. well worth it, and they would have never gotten 350 anyway, so you, no need to insure it for and that And if much. you're looking to save 25% on your insurance, 813-377-2775. That's 813-377-2775. Or a policy review. Give yeah. us a call or text, 813-377-2775. We'll be back. Red door number five, hour number two. <laughs> 